Hello friends, this is Nick, this is Anobi Solutions and today we continue with Lab 9 from the series of VMware vSphere 6.5 which is managing VMFS data stores. For the purpose of this video I'll use my domain controller um, which you can see right here for authentication. I will use my storage server which I'll use for my iSCSI targets. You can see right here. And I will use the two ESXi holes that I've already powered on and my vCenter server to manage everything. So we are going to look into creating a new data, uh, VMFS data store uh, for uh, the ESXi host. We are going to rename that data store, then try to expand it, then remove it, extend the VMFS data store and to see what is the result of all the operations in practice. So the primary data store that VMware utilizes is the VMFS data store. Um, of course, there are other data stores as well that can store files and virtual machines and ISO files and so on. But the VMFS is the um, file system that resides on a current storage uh, that uh, you can store um, like I said, files of virtual machines. Uh, basically, the VMFS is uh, data store is optimized for storing and accessing large files like virtual disks and memory images of suspended virtual machines. And the maximum size of a VMFS data store is 64 terabytes, which is a lot of space. If I go to one of my ESXi hosts and then click on the configure tab, and data stores, I'll be able to see what, what data stores are currently connected to my ESXi host and what exactly is the type of uh, the data store connected. In this case, you can see two data stores that are a VMFS 6 and this is the latest version and depending on where uh, and when you are watching this video, this can be uh, upgraded as well, but for now this is the latest VMFS uh, version. So, of course, you can have different versions, for example, you can have version 3 or version 5, uh, but with the latest VMware 6.5, uh, the 6 and the 5 are supported. So, the other option that you can see in here and we'll see in later videos is the NFS um, data store as well. The first task that I want to do is I'm going to configure a new VMFS data store and I'm going to show you how you can configure that as well. So, um, if I go on the my vCenter server and go to data stores, Again, you will see that I have the two data stores available. Instead of configuring the data stores on uh, each ESXi host, or if you configure on one, it should be refreshed on the other as well, but uh, I'm just going to configure that on the vCenter server, so um, I can confirm that uh, I'm creating that for my uh, entire uh, vCenter, instead of each uh, working on each ESXi. So I'm going to click on the new data store, and I'm going to select to place the data store in my data center, NLB data center. We have a few different options in here. First is the VMFS, the one that we are talking about. The second one is the NFS um, that we are going to create in the next video of the series. And the last one is the vVolume. So I'm going to select the first option and click next. And we're going to name this data store. So you can see right on the top left, I've um, named my data stores uh, to be the exact same name or just to provide a bit more information. But of course, depending on your naming convention, you can configure them uh, differently. So this is a nice CSI storage that is connected. The uh, file system is VMFS and the data store is three. So uh, you can see um, that I'll need to select the one of the hosts that uh, has the accessible disks on it. But if I select the two hosts, the two hosts will see the uh, five gigabyte iSCSI disk that I've configured in the previous video right here. 
So the disk is both connected to the two holes, so I'm just going to use ESXi1 to select the disk and click next. The next option will ask me if I want to use the latest VMFS version 6 or VMFS version 5. So depending on the version that you want to create your VMFS store, you will have different features and functionalities. For example, um, automatic space reclamation uh, is not available in VMFS version 5, but is available in VMF version 6. On the other hand, vSphere 6.0 and earlier hosts cannot access VMFS version 6 in here. So you will need to choose carefully depending on your scenario. For this case, as I'm using 6.5 um, vSphere, I can use the latest one, the latest version. So the next tab is going to ask me for the partition configuration. And um, for this video, because I want to increase the size later, I will just lower the space that uh, I'm going to create the partition to 2.5 gigabytes or exactly the half of the actual full capacity. The other options, I will leave the defaults and we'll click next and then finish. So I will wait for a moment and the new data store should appear. Okay. Well, I made a mistake in there or did I? I actually left one zero that um, we can add now by renaming the actual data store. First, I want to refresh the capacity information so we can make the status normal. And you can see that uh, the iSCSI data store, if I right click on it, I will have the option to rename the actual data store. So what I can do here is add a zero, or if I can copy a zero from here, because it's not allowing me to add anything. Okay. And click OK. This will rename the data store. And now the data store is 03. So we've now created a new data store and we've renamed the actual data store. If I go to my ESXi02, I will see that data store 03 is present and available for me to store information on. An interesting thing that we need to mention while we are here, if you noticed carefully um, and if you watch carefully, the free space on the new data store is 800 megabytes, a bit more. And this is because the actual VMFS file system needs some space for it to work properly. You can think of the VMFS um, file system as the um, cluster shared volume file system in the Windows. This is pretty much, let's say, an equivalent. So it will need some space to allocate for the file system to work properly. So let's say that um, you have filled in all the data store uh, and you need to increase the capacity of the data store. You can achieve this by going into the data stores section and expand the actual data store capacity or increase the data store capacity instead. So if we select the data store that we want to increase and click on the bottom on the top, what we can do is we have two options in here. One is we can um, actually increase uh, the capacity or extend the capacity of the data store with another data store. So we can, for example, the storage team does not have the ability to increase the actual size of the LUN. Instead, they can add another data store and you can combine the two so you can increase the size of the current one. Or you can actually increase the size if they manage to increase the size on the actual storage. You can increase the size with um, within the actual um, data store. So you can see right here that we have uh, the total capacity is 5 gigabytes, the free space is 2.5.
So what we can do is we can use the free space of 2.5 gigabytes to expand the data store. You can see. So we can click next to this one. And now from 2.5 gigabytes, the data store will become to 4.75 gigabytes. So we can click finish. And after a few seconds, the data store is now 4.75 gigabytes in capacity, of which 3.3 is free that I can store information on. So be, to be exact with the, the actual terms that VMware use, the, the operation that you saw was is called expand, expanding of the data store. The other option that you can use is the extent of the data store, which we can see later. But first, we will have to remove and see how we can remove a VMFS data store. So um, from the same page uh, that we are on at the moment, we can do several actions with the actual data store. We can unmount the data store if needed, or we can delete the data store. So if you unmount the actual data store, the data store will not be visible, but the data will be retained on it. So it's always a good idea to try to unmount the data store before you click delete, because if there are any virtual machines residing or anything that is, um, anything that is configured to use this data store, uh, will be affected and most probably you will receive an error and you won't be able to delete it or unmount it at all. But first what you can do is you can always browse the actual data store. That way you will verify that there is there are no virtual machines that are, are currently residing or there isn't any information at all. So um, if I go to the data center once again and data stores I'll be able to go ahead and just click on delete data store. You can see that it's going to warn me that it's going to um, force and mount the data store, delete all the information. I don't have any information. This is a brand new data store. So I'm just going to click yes. And if there isn't anything that is uh, residing with there shouldn't be anything the data store will be uh, deleted. And now you can see that I'm left with data store one and two. So the last thing that I want to show you is the extent operation where you can um, have a data store like this one, or let's select this one and click to increase the capacity. Now you can see that although uh, this data store is on a different LUN, which is a LUN 0, if I'm not mistaken. We can verify that real fast. Let me try to go in here. And then configure. If I select the actual ESXi host, let me see if I'll be able to verify on which LUN is the actual data store. But if I'm not mistaken, they should be on LUN 1, uh, on LUN 0 and LUN 1. So this is the 40 gigabyte capacity one and this is the 55 one. So if we go to the cluster once again, data stores. This is the 44, this is the uh, 55, uh, this is the 40 and this is the 55, I'm sorry. So this is zero. So uh, if I want to extend a VMFS data store, I can s add another LUN, present another, another LUN to the uh, ESXi and then select that to combine it to my current data store. So I will increase the capacity with five gigabytes. Of course, I can increase or decrease this size in here. So if I click next, I'll be able to uh, increase the size. So the future data store will become 
um, 45 gigabytes in total. I don't want to do that right now because I want to keep things separately, but um, in some cases this can be done, uh, as I said, maybe the storage team is not able to increase the actual uh, loan size of the one that uh, you want to increase the data store on and then can add you another LUN so you can combine the two LUNs into a single unit. So this is in general how you can manage VMFS data store data stores in this video we've um, created a new vmfs data store we uh, did a rename on that data store later we tried and we successfully expanded the uh, data store to consume all the available space um, we i showed you how you can delete the data store how you can unmount it and um, i showed you how you can extend a current data store with um, another learn if needed so um, yeah the next video will be on the topic of managing uh, nfs uh, data stores so i'll show you how you can configure that as well if you like the video you can always subscribe to the channel and hit the like button share the videos so we can grow and i just want to thank you very much for uh, viewing and supporting knlb solutions if you have a question you can always put it in the comment section and i'll try to answer it as soon as possible this was nick from nlb solutions see you in the next lap.